Hey everyone, welcome back to episode make a face. And hair and a hat. Add a cube, scale it down. Add a subdivision modifier, turn up the viewport display to two, and I like to disable optimal display. Scale it slightly on the X axis, apply the subdivision modifier. Delete half the face, add a mirror modifier. We don't need the back part of the head, so select and delete it. And up here as well. Grab this middle vertex and move it forward. Proportional editing is useful for keeping everything smooth. It can take a while to get used to. You can scroll your mouse wheel to change the size of your proportional fall off. The front of his face is pretty flat, so pull this vertex forward. Again, using proportional editing will help. The same with these two vertices. Grab these three vertices at the bottom of the head and pull them to where his jaw is. Grab this vertex near the top of his head and pull it up. Add a subdivision modifier. Pull this vertex forward, select these four and pull them out a bit. Move these two out a bit more. Select all and smooth shade. You can now see if anything is out of place. Shift stuff around to keep it all smooth. Turn up the subdivision modifier viewport display and add a mirror modifier. Move the mirror above the subdivision. In general, mirror should come before subdivision, otherwise it'll subdivide the middle faces as corners and then mirror it. Then you get these things in a crease down the middle. Blech. Subdivision will shrink your mesh a bit as well, so you can scale it or reposition things to get it to match the reference again. Move vertices in groups of edge loops or with proportional editing. Move the entire front of the face forward, and pull the back of the head back. Eventually, I ended up extruding another set of faces back into the hairline on the bottom. Now just do some fine tuning. Drop the viewport display of the subdivision modifier to 1, and in object mode, apply your modifiers from top to bottom. Delete half of the face, add another mirror modifier. This little nose shape is surprisingly not the easiest thing to do, but there's a lot of ways to go about making it. Move the middle front vertices into line with the side reference. Move the closest row of vertices forward a bit as well. Add an edge loop with Ctrl R here, one here, and one here. Reshape it. If you add a subdivision modifier, you'll notice that the tip of his nose becomes far too rounded. So I'm going to use my knife tool with K and cut in three edges here. And then two more, like so. Get everything back into place, Match the front of his face to the top reference. Check how his face looks with shading and move anything that you don't like. Move the bottom vertices on his head to match the front reference better. And reshape the front of his head with proportional editing. The goal being to get it as close to the reference as you can. Smooth everything out as you go. Now for the ear. Add a cube, position, and scale it. Delete the face closest to the head. Position and rotate in top view. Select the outermost face and pull it to the end of his ear. In front view, rotate this cube to roughly match the ear. And scale down the ear tip. Position the loop near his head. Add an edge loop near the middle. Add a subdivision modifier and match the shape to the reference. Apply the subdivision and fine tune the shape. Work your way through all the references and try your best to match it up. Now attach the ear to the head. Enable snapping to vertex and extrude vertices out onto the head object's vertices. Edge slide these vertices away from the head. Grab and snap this one onto this one. And this one here. And this one as well. Select these six faces and delete them. Create a face on the head here and use the knife tool to cut it in half. In object mode, select the ear, shift select the face, and merge it with Ctrl J. Now the ear is part of the face object. Hit M and choose Merge by Distance. Now fill in some of these open faces. It can be hard to decide how to match up uneven edge quantities. Leaving it like this would be completely acceptable. But I want it better! So I added an edge loop here and spent some time attempting to organize my faces. This is ultimately what I came up with. It's... it's good enough! Shape the ear again. Proportional editing is a lifesaver. Select these six bases and inset with I, scale down a bit. Pull the middle vertices in, and smooth stuff out. I think that's pretty good. 
Now for the hat. Ignore how the head looks. This is the old one I made. I made a new one. It better. Add a 32 vertex circle, position, and scale it about here. Extrude and scale as needed to shape the hat. Scale the tip of the hat by zero and continue adding edge loops as needed. Select these two edge loops and scale them on the X axis to match the reference. We'll come back to the hat later, but it's good for now. Let's start on the hair. Add a cube with a subdivision modifier, viewport of two. In object mode, scale down, set the object origin to geometry, rotate and position like so. Since we position this cube in object mode, we can hit scale XX to scale along its local X axis. Position more. Delete these inner vertices and these back ones and continue fine tuning. It took me a while to realize my top reference got moved somehow, so I got it back into position. Remember to lock the selectability of your reference over here to avoid that issue. Now move stuff around to match. Add a mirror modifier and set the mirror object to the head or chest, anything with a centered out origin. Add a subdivision modifier, get this edge vertices to line up with the hat. When it's good, select these two faces and extrude them downward. Position and scale. Add an edge loop in the middle, try to shape these groups of vertices into six sided circles. Add an edge loop near the top and scale it. Scale these edge loops by zero on the Z axis. Mash them to the reference. Select all in smooth shade. Select the hat object. Select the outer edge loop. Extrude and scale by zero to merge at center. Add an edge loop with control R and position it near the outside of this loop of faces. Pull this inner group of vertices in towards the hat. Either circle select them or have proportional editing turned on. Beautify this hair piece by making it more circular. Select the bottom faces, extrude and scale to sharpen the tip of his hairpiece. Match it to the reference. Once again, ignore how the head looks, but just move stuff around to make sure the hair and ears fit nicely together. Now would be an okay time to delete half the hat and mirror it, and then create the back hairpiece also mirrored. I did both sides manually, but it doesn't have to be done that way. Select these bottom vertices on the hat, duplicate with Shift D, and separate by selection with P. Name this object into hair2 or back hair, whatever you want. Disable all other objects to get them out of the way. Add an 8 vertex circle, position and rotate to match this middle hair strand. Again, do yourself a favor and mirror this process. Duplicate this circle, position it over here, extrude and scale to match the reference, and do some fine tuning. Extrude this bottom loop down and scale by zero to merge. Select the middle circle and do the same. Snap this middle vertex to this vertex with snapping. <laughs> Snap these touching vertices together and merge by distance with M. Extrude a vertex over here and create a face here. Do this on all the hair pieces. Select these two vertices and extrude them up. Move these forward, this section looks good. I'm not gonna be too picky with the way these are shaped. Just extrude out vertices and make faces. Then position stuff to make it look like the hair. Feel free to mirror this object. I didn't because I'm a rebel, but mirror will make it go faster. Approximately twice as fast. The main goal is to make a gapless connection between this hair object and his head. Having overlapping geometry is totally okay. Just extrude faces from the hair and head object as needed. I wanted my hair to remain pointy with the subdivision modifier on. So I deleted the bottom points of the hair, extruded out new loops, and scaled them by zero to merge them. Added edge loops very close to the bottom vertices, and then edge slid them to be on top of the other loops. And that'll work. If you retopple this guy though, you'll be able to get a much more efficient geometry count. Let's make the front hair piece. Set the cursor to origin, add a cube. Move it up on the Z axis, scale it down. Add a subdivision modifier. Delete the back face. Disable the visibility of objects and references as needed. Position it and move the front face forward. Scale the back opening, move the bottom up and the top down. Add an edge loop and position stuff to match the references. This object is asymmetrical, so we won't use a mirror modifier. Apply the subdivision modifier with a viewport display of one and add another one. Position everything so that it's somewhat flush with the other hair objects and lines up with the hat. 
Select all and smooth shade. Use the knife tool with K to cut in edges along this other hair object. Do the same on both sides. Select all of these faces underneath and delete them. Add an edge loop across the top either with the knife tool or Ctrl R. Enable snapping to vertex and snap this object to the other hair object. Add edge loops as needed. Select this other hair object and apply the mirror modifier. In object mode, select both of these hair objects and join with Ctrl J. Select these four vertices and make a face with F. Select these vertices and delete them. Join up these two pieces with faces like so, and use a tri face here. Delete these three vertices and snap this one to this one with snapping. Select all and merge by distance. Split the space into two with the knife or by deleting and making new faces. Then shape a bit. Move stuff around as needed to close any holes between the hair and the head. Move all these back vertices to leave a gap between the edge of the hat. And that looks pretty good to me. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like like the video and comment and stuff. Join us next time when we give Link his pokey stick and his anti-pokey stick. Stay safe, I love you all. Goodbye.